So, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sabu Koirala, and I am UI engineer at LeapFrog. Talking about myself, I have done some front-end projects. I have also interest in doing wireframes, building mockups and designs, and I'll, I'll also like to prototype them. So today, I'm going to talk about seven ways a developer and designer can make each other's life better. So today, I'll be basically talking about two of the major character that we have in any sort of web development. Let's get introduced to our characters first. The first character here we have is Jerry. He is a designer. He loves, he understands the uh, requirement of any projects, and he cares about the user experience. And finally, he, total it, he totals them all into a user-centric interface. Uh, the next character we have is Tom here. He's a front-end developer. He loves coding. He, to he takes the design that is made by Jerry, and then he integrates uh, data, logic into it, and finally bring those design into life. So we have seen Tom and Jerry for our entire childhood, right? They fight all the time. So why do they fight? So they are fighting because behind the scene, they are developing an app. Let's look at this. Expectation versus reality. The screenshot at the right-hand side, it is made by Jerry. And on the left-hand side, we have the screenshot that of the app that was actually delivered. Doesn't seem much of difference, right? But let's look closer. We can see that the hover states look really weird. We also can see that the image is very stretched. And this one, two, three, four, these digits are not just for the purpose of decorations. They're actually slider. But Tom here, he has just a banner. He has image. So we kind of have started to see a difference between these images, right? So let's see why this is happening. So we have Jerry here. He's a bit dissatisfied. He's like, come on, Tom. The app doesn't even look good as in mockups. We have no accessibility. We have not optimized our search, uh, site for search engines, and it doesn't even look consistent in all the browsers and our devices. So next time, Tom, he's here. And he has its own story. He's like, really? the TikTok light is the app? This took a different sora. And he's like, hey, I know what happened. The designs you provided, they were not feasible for our tech stack. You didn't even provide me any style guide, did you? And interactions. Did you forget about the last minute change that were done by a client? So So how the mock-ups or how the app that we finally built would be more like the mock-up that was actually intended as. So there's a clash between them. So how do we work together to make each other's life easier? Here are seven points for peace. Let's move to our first point. It's about standard checklist for HTML and CSS. Jerry here looks very angry, right? He's like, look, Tom, I already told you. We have a messy styling. We have a messy semantics. SEO optimized, accessibility, I'm reply. So Tom here is like, OK, I understand. I've been busy developing the feature, so I tend to forget small details that is required for our app. So So here, Jerry is giving out points for Tom what to remember in developing any sort of app. The first thing is semantics. Jerry is like, look, Tom, from today, we are strictly using HTML semantics. You better use the alt attribute in images. You better use ti uh, title attribute in links. So our site will be more optimized for search engines. The next thing is accessibility. Jerry here, he has a complaint. He's like, OK, Tom, last night I forgot my mouse at home. So I was traversing our site with keyboard, and nothing works. I hope we are fixing it, right? And you better push the put those small visual cues in focus state, so I'd rather know where I am right now. So after that, 
Jerry again, he's traversing his site through mobile. He's like, okay, I want to enter my credit card number. So guess what happened? After entering a credit card number, he gets a text keypad. He's so frustrated now. He's like, Tom, from next time onward, I better get that, I better get that number keypad if I have to write a number. So after this, Tom, uh, Jerry started to have a trust issue with Tom. So he's like, OK, I'm going to check your CSS files as well. Let's see. So these are some of the complaints that Jerry has. He's like, OK. CSS the HTML content. So CSS is just for presentation purpose. So let's not write HTML contents in CSS. The next thing is, what if I have to print any bills? So let's start using media prints so that our site is more accessible towards print as well. And you know, a browser these days, some browsers support some kind of property, some browser doesn't support some kind of property. So from now onwards, let's use fallback. And stay from when Jerry was looking at CSS codes, he found a strange class name, RM123. So he asked Tom, so what does this class name do? And Tom looks at the class name and he's like, okay, I don't know if you have a class name, but I don't know if you So we have to name a lot of things, right? So let's use a consistent guideline. And one of the guidelines that Jerry suggests is BEM convention. So the BEM convention is kind of more descriptive, so let's make more use of it. So all the way long, he also suggested some of the tools that will make our work process more easy. The first tool is W3C validations. So after writing your HTML and CSS code, let's have a habit to validate it. We also use Lint, Prettyfire, etc. For, for making our code more beautiful, right? The next thing is preprocessor. Let's start using preprocessors such as SAS for our CSS. And I already told you about the browser supports. So this is some of the thing or checklist that Jerry has made for Tom. Now let's move to our scenario number two. It's about understanding UX process. Now Tom here, he's like, seems like we need to invest more time on this design. Can we tweak a bit? And he started thinking, why, are the design, why the designs has to be so complicated? Why this interaction? Why this animation? It would be so easier for a developer to work on it. So Actually, if anybody feels that way, Jerry is here to explain the proper UX process for us. So your designs or your mock-up or how do you get to the developer like Amit Haan. So how does those designs come up? He's talking about four of the major phases in any design process. The first is discover, ideate, create, and major. In the discover phase, we identify our end users and we go interview them. After interviewing them, we find some of the pain points they are having. After finding that pain points, we move toward the ideate phase. Ideate phase is for brainstorming. Two pain points later, kick it a feature bonusoxa. What are the possible solutions for those pain points? After knowing that, we move to create phase. In this create phase, we use tools like Sketch and Figma, and we build a high fidelity mockups. After building high fidelity mockups, it's not just finally handed over to developer. This which is we measure it first. In this major phase, what we do is we just collect some of the users again and we take feedback from the designs. Do your design tick sekinai? Esco features tick sekinai? Do you want anything else? We iterate a lot. After iterating a lot and after some of the iterations, we finally make a final version of a design. And that final version of the design is handed to you. So this is how the entire design process work. So actually, I, I was involved in one of the project recently, and the main goal initially, 
the main goal of the client was to build a predicting app for nurse managers. So, the app was not the goal of the client, but uh, after following this process, they went to nurse managers and they interviewed them, what are their pain points? And finally, app check us the one of predicting one, that one entire workflow check us to manage the so if we follow this process, then it's very uh, likely that the changes occur, changes doesn't occur when the development is going on. Changes occur in the design phase, and in the design phase, uh, if the changes is limited to design phase, then development works go smoothly. So we are done with our second scenario. Now let's move to our scenario number three. Uh, this scenario is about technical awareness. He's like, hey Tom, I don't think the design of the chart is as I, as, as, um, as I have made. It has been changed, what happened? So Tom looks terrified here. He's like, behind the scenes, Jerry went with the fancy looking chart as such. And after he looks at the chart, He's like, Mala, you chart the camera app, Matayu. Tom looks terrified. He's like, How do I do it now? We are using library for the chart, and this particular design, this is not feasible at all for us. And if I start building chart from the point zero, then it will take a lot of time for me. So how do I do? Te mati ule te tro UX process buzai sagay sa ina. Ako siri sa ban niyo, lahat mili na wano pero so. Sorry. So this time he's determined. He's like, I know, Mogoira Bansu. There are some of the technical constraints every developer faces, right? There are some of the time constraints that every, every developer faces. So every design that is made could not be executed, right? So you could have to buzaidi no podenta. And then he goes to Tom, eh, he goes to Jerry, sorry. And he's like, Timli Timro process the buzayo, now it's my turn. So, he went to him and he's like, okay, I absolutely love the design of your chart. No offense, but listen, there are some of the constraints that we have. We have some technical constraints. So, the first thing I did was technical research. In this phase, um, we are using a React framework, right? So, in this phase, I look up to every library, every library of chart that React provided to me. So and then I finally listed down three of them. After listing three of them, I did a feature testing. So what is feature testing? In this phase, I tested the library in all the browsers and my devices, and I also tested the flexibility of the library. How easily can I do it? So after testing everything, I come, finally came up to one library, and this is the one, so take it. Please design accordingly. Please de design according to the constraint of this library so it is easier for us to work on it. So after listening everything about Tom, Jerry's like, okay, I understood about you. So he changed the design. After doing that, they both seem happy now. So this case seems to settle down. Now let's move towards our case number four. So case number four is about thorough design. In this, uh, in this uh, scenario, uh, Tom seems very angry. He's like, yo man, where are all my state for the forms? What if there's ugly data? I'm totally confused. No cool man, no cool. So this is the phase where most of the front end developer have their complaints about. This is the phase where designer has to put some effort to make their life easier. So Tom is uh, showing one of a table to Jerry. He's like, look at the table, Jerry. All the data this are not the real time data. They are just a dummy text, right? So what if, the, what if any of the data is missing? Where is the design for that? What if the data is so long, it's uh, five to six line long, so where is the design for it? 
So next time, when you build any sort of design, let's consider these things. What if there's no data at all? What the data is too long? So the next scenario here, the next case is here when Tom wants to build an uh, inbox. So initially, Jerry provided just this screen. And Tom went to Jerry and he's like, OK, I get, I get about the screen. So what if I have to, what if our app is fetching data? We have to show some, uh, some sort of preloaders, right? We have to show uh, some sort of empty screen if there's no uh, message at all. So where are the data, where are the designs for all those screens? So while providing any, any sort of uh, design, just let's consider that there are all other states as well. They need, the developer need designs for every states we are having, whether it be fetching states or whether it be empty states, whether it be failure or success states, everything. So the next thing is about responsive design. So Jerry was initially complaining about our app not looking good in every devices, right? And now Tom has something to say. He's like, Jerry, did you provide it any sort of responsive design for us? No. So you have no right to complain. What I did was I just decreased the font size, I decreased the spacing, and that is the best I can do. So from next time, if you want our app to look good in every way, just provide me the designs for responsive screen as well. So after hearing everything from Tom, Jerry realized, OK, I have some mistakes too. So from today, he will be building a style guide for Tom. The style guides contain everything. It contains what color we are using, what are the typographies, what are the different states for forms, and everything. After getting this, Tom seems really happy. He also built a UI kit out of it. So this is how they made a settlement for this stage. So from next time, if any developer has any confusion about designs for every state, go to uh, your designer, then tell him to build a style guide for you. It'll be so much easier for you. OK. So this is the fifth scenario. It's about conveying designer's mindset. So Jerry Lig's style guide to provide good this again. No? But still, Tom has some confusions. He's like, user journey, how it starts, how it ends, I have no idea. So Jerry gets worried. A mile upon I could design no buzi pochita. The app that is that we are building would not be as good as, or it it would not be as intended as, right? So he did a lot of research. After doing a lot of research, he found out that communication is the key. So from next time, whenever Jerry handed over any designs to Tom, he gave a complete walkthrough of the design first. After giving a complete walkthrough, he also realized that screen flow is very necessary. Providing just one screen or two screen that may confuse our developer, how the users come and how the users go, how the users do a particular thing, right? So from today, he has started giving an entire screen flow or entire user journey for us. The next thing that he realized was prototyping. Jerry has always been using prototyping tools as such Invision or Figma, Zeppelin. From today, he has realized that providing a proper hotspot or providing every navigation or every interaction that a particular page has will make the life of developer much more easier. So here they seem to be happy. Now. We have come to our sixth, phase, sixth uh, scenario. The sixth scenario is about proper project management. So in this scenario, Tom and Jerry, they both are getting a lot of pressure from their clients. They are like, they couldn't meet any deadlines. They are just doing their work day and night, day and night. So they are really frustrated. And what they did is, 
they go, uh, they go to their neighborhood uh, project manager, and his name is Spike. And here he is. So they ask Spike, uh, what do you do to handle this sort of pressure from client? What do you do at all? And Spike started with all his story of following an agile process. He showed them this particular board. He's like, we are following a agile process, and uh, we break down our work task into smaller sprints, smaller chunks. So how many of you know this board? A lot of them knows, right? So, so Spike is talking about this board. And he's like, OK, from next time, whenever you are doing any sort of task, just follow the sprint rule. And the next thing is, the design must be at least two sprints ahead the development process. So what does it? Uh, what, uh, what is the main uh, faida of the uh, of this, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so if we do this, then uh, the designs are already locked two sprints ahead. So the development process can go smoothly, as I've already told. Because if there's no change in between then uh, the developers doesn't have to consider about extra time or extra effort. So this is very necessary that the design process must be at least two sprint ahead of the development. And the next thing is about proper estimation. So if we look closely, <laughs> we spend very less time estimating, right? Or we, we just do a random estimations. So next time, whenever you are there to provide estimations to your client, just first break down the break down your task have a proper acceptance criteria identify the complexity of task and put a small buffer time to it after doing all all this you just give the estimation to client let no, let this scenario not happen to you the next thing is about buffer time and this is time for testing <laughs> you have built your app right so after building your app it is necessary that you test it properly. So you can do a quality uh, release. So just put a buffer time for your work. That's it. But no matter what, no matter any PM tells you anything, developer or designer tells you anything. So now let's move towards our seventh scenario. It is about design verification or design QA. So lately, Jerry is a weird activity. He's like he's taking his uh, magnifier glass and he's looking at his laptop up and down, up and down. And Tom is really worried. He comes to Jerry. Jerry thinks like, why are you acting so weird? So Jerry is very excited. He's like, this is the design verification phase. So what is design, uh, what is design verifications? So design verification is a concluding step for us. It is the step where we verify that the designs that we made is exactly the, uh, the product that we deliver. So when do we do these things? When do we do design verification? Design verification, say, it's best if you can do at end of every sprint. But if not, then release final release feature delivered If we can do this uh, design verification, it will be much, much more, uh, better for your app. So who are involved in this phase? Who are involved in design verification? Uh, so Jerry says like that. But if we can involve any other thought person, so we cannot find exactly what is so if we have a perspective from the third person, then we have better idea that yo yo kura bigre kura isai yaya yaya chai ami chuki mei vanera. So if we can involve a third person, it's totally right. If not, designer, developer, and QA. These three person should be there. So why design verification? So design verification, as I've already told, you would say mainly ke gor no ko lai vane. So client ko aat sama puk da hai rice, I'm the product. We do not get complaints from them. We can give them a fully finished product and fully applicable product. So this was all about design verification. So let's recap 
towards our seven points for peace. Standard checklist for HTML, CSS, understanding UX process, technical awareness, thorough design, conveying designer's mindset, proper project management, and design verification. You saw Pista follow Gorisa Kepachise, they both seem very happy. And after that, they have come to an agreement. So, but really? Kitha, next eighth scenario, ninth scenario, tenth scenario, you know? So, but let's work together, designer and developers, and let's make app better. So, this is all. Thank you.